What is going on up here? I never know, man. Day, day man. Day man. Fighter of the night, man. Champion of the sun. Sun. You're a master of karate and friendship <laughs> for everyone. A day man. That's it. Day man. Oh. Oh. Fighter of the night, man. Oh. Oh. Champion of the sun. Oh. <laughs> You're a master of karate and, and friendship for everyone. Day man. Day man. Oh. Oh. Fighter oh. of the night, man. Oh. Hello everyone, welcome to a new edition of Size Corner. He's John Zimmerman, born and raised in the San Francisco Bay Area, representing the Bay Area Proud in Montana. You can follow him on Twitter at JohnZim406. Again, representing Missoula, uh, representing the Bay Area Proud in Missoula, Montana. You can follow me, Cyrus Otzes, on Twitter at Dog Surf Roadshow. All right, I got to play this. This I, one of the, this is arguably the most popular meme out there right now. And I'm going to play it because... You and I had a fun discussion uh, about corn, and it made me track this video down. So let me play this first, and then we'll get into it. Wait, here we go. I really like corn. What do you like about corn? It's corn. A big corn that knobs. It has the juice. It has the juice. I can't imagine I'm going to use It's corn. I didn't know corn made juice. Uh, I guess I guess it does. Anyway, serious? You never heard of corn syrup? It's in like every single thing you eat. That's is that what you would classify as corn juice? I guess yeah. Okay. Yeah, but the kid, the kid it's just refined down. And, he, and his I mean, you, seriously, you probably had corn syrup like five times today already. No, no, I'm I'm a, I'm a healthy eater, man. I, I refuse oh, to okay. put that in my body. Um, or I try not to, man. Like if I drink a soda, I try to go Mexican style where it's cane sugar instead of. High fructose there you go, there you go. But uh, no, we were having a debate this week about because because what's the what's the corn thing that you love that you were trying elotes. to give me? What is it called? It's elotes. Elotes. I've never had an elote. You swear by these things. I They're just delicious. Don't I think corn is fine, but on the cob, it's messy. It gets all over your face, your hands. And I'm it's I just yeah, I'm not a big fan of it, man. But you swear by these things, apparently. Oh, yeah, man. You ever, you ever tried cooler corn? I don't even know what that is. No, so no. But you just take a you take a cooler, you throw your corn in, you throw in some like you know boiling water from a tea kettle, close it. Fifteen minutes later, you got cooked corn. You don't even have to work for corn. <laughs> oh man, that meme though is funny. I've heard, I've, I've heard that funny. so many times. I never knew what the original source was. Well, that kid's that kid's that. that kid's good. He's that he's kid awesome. Is, that kid yeah. is amazing. So we're here to talk about not about corn. Um, no, again, we're, no. we do these live every Tuesday at 1 p.m. If you want to come join the party, we'll, we address everything. The, the phone lines are open. Not literally. It's actually a chat. Dude, <laughs> let's start with the Niners, man. This Last week in our debut show that we're doing together, we went down memory lane. We talked about the history of the Niners. That was a fun show. I love doing that. It was great. And yeah. then right after that, uh, this happens, man. What, what, are your, what are your thoughts on Jimmy G and the Niners right now, dude? Well, okay. To be honest, when I watched the game, I was I was so disappointed and uh, disgusted. Um, but like you know, my number one takeaway is we have a, a Super Bowl caliber defense. Our defense is amazing right now, and it's not even fully healthy. We don't have Jimmy Ward back. We're missing uh, Willis. Uh, we did lose uh, Al Shair, which I'll talk about in a minute. But like, our defense is Super Bowl worthy, and if our offense could put. 21 points on the board every game we would we would probably go undefeated and we're just not capable of that right now and now i was i was upset sunday night and i was thinking you know it was bad play calling blah 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 but here's what it really comes down to and i i believe colin coward might have been the first one to make this point and uh -huh. but for most of preseason jimmy g was kept away from the team he wasn't even given a playbook okay so he had no reps with any of these guys um he, even when he was signed, he still didn't get any first team reps. Lance was getting all of that work and he's only had the playbook for like two to three weeks. And I know he's experienced in this, this offense, but 
I mean, Shanahan runs complex things, and he does it to highlight the players he has. He knows the weaknesses on the offensive line, so it's obvious that the playbook has changed. Jimmy hasn't had that. I think maybe another week or two, I think we should see the offense turn it around. Now, the big problem with that is we lose Trent Williams for four to six weeks. Uh, that's a big blow. He's the only, I think, like above – well, McGlinchey's up kind of good, but he's like the only like – positively rated offensive lineman we have and she's fantastic dude i love that guy i, I love him too but williams is a first ballot hall of famer still in the prime of his career that's a huge blow to our offense and we're gonna have to scheme a lot more around that and so now we're down our starting quarterback our starting left tackle and our starting running back like can the niners ever just have a season where we're not hurt all the time the they they did the, the year they played the chiefs they, they were relatively healthy but you're True. right most years they're hurt but so I, I feel like you're making excuses for for Jimmy G, and you feel like making excuses. No, they're not for excuses. It's the reality of it. Uh, uh, operating a football team under pressure is a complex thing. I don't think Jimmy G is that great, but I think we need to give him a little more more benefit of the doubt. What uh, because, what changed? What changed in the playbook from from the last three years that to this year, where he's suddenly like unfamiliar? I mean, if anyone should have well, been able to okay. Step First in off, and, the whole playbook changed because it was all going to be about Trey Lance, right? So putting Jimmy G in, you have to change the whole playbook because that whole playbook is dependent on a running passing quarterback. Jimmy G is not – you can't just – no, no, no. When the whole offense – you know how Shanahan works. There's always moving parts on the offensive line. Now it all has to change. The protections have to get different. And the receivers have to, like, take different steps and all that stuff. It's all changed. And the fact that, like, I mean, maybe it's a benefit to Jimmy. He didn't see the playbook. <laughs> but the rest of the team has been doing that playbook now so they're on like a different it's just the offense hasn't gelled yet and you know because of the fact they added the seventh playoff team and we now have a 17th game yeah. you get a little bit more leeway in you know like figuring stuff out and right now the, the, the Niners are in a serious figuring stuff out point I mean except for the defense the defense hands off is probably the best in the league to me uh they I think Russell Wilson's Broncos had nine or ten three and outs it's the first time ever a team has won a game when they had eight or more three and outs than the losing team. Okay. The Niners, a, the Niners had one. That's a good stat. Yeah. But but it's let me not, ask you, what, what did the playbook have to do with like Jimmy G? Uh, the, the, okay. So missing most throws? Games, what's on? Like missing throws completely? Just, like throwing behind yeah, guys? Yeah, the like, accuracy part of it. But, but even then, like I can understand some argument being made because timing is a vitally important variable – in sure. the passing scheme of both NFL teams. So like, I also G remember he did have off season soldier surgery, but that, that should be irrelevant because the shoulder, well, he hasn't had time to play with any of these guys. He was kept away from the team all of preseason and training camp. So, but what does that have to do with, with that whole, look, the biggest play in that game was the debacle in the end zone, the safety. What does any of this have to do with like being cognizant of where the end zone is Throwing a pass that was a pick six. I think the safety saved a pick six, man. Although in hindsight, it made things worse because the, the Broncos did march and score a touchdown. I think on the I'm, I'm also ninety percent sure that was the play Trent Williams got hurt on. I, 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 I think I said I think I said at the bar this is the worst single Niners play since Jimmy G overthrew Emmanuel Sanders in the Super Bowl. because oh. this is going to change our season. What are the single worst plays in Niners history? You just made me think of that. I mean, uh, Steve, for me personally, for me personally, it's Roger Craig fumbling the second time against the Giants in the 91 uh, championship game. What about Jerry I Rice? I hate to bring it Jerry up. Jerry Rice in the 1986 wild card against the Giants. They lost the game 49 to 3. He had a fumble early in that game. That's yeah. a horrible memory. Yeah, that, I don't think we were, I don't I don't think we we're gonna win that game either way. No, but I that avalanche, it all avalanche from there. But you're yeah. right, the Roger Craig second fumble in the same drive in the yeah. 1991 NFC Championship. God damn it, man! That prevented a three P, dude. That prevented a three P. Um, well, even earlier, I mean, that whole game was just a game of horrors. Uh, when Joe Montana got hit, um, that's another play. That's another oh my play. God, I I was I was at that game as a kick as a kid, and I I was scared for his safety. I thought and he was, was yeah, Leonard Marshall. Leonard Marshall. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And then, yeah. And that was a, that was just a horrible play. I, that sticks to my mind so vividly because yeah, you yeah. know he got messed up when he broke yeah, his yeah. hand that play, I think. And, but then, but, I mean, but then Steve Young was his backup. I, I, they, I still think they would have won the Super Bowl if they had just gone past the Giants. The Bills 
would not have stood a chance. I really don't think, I really fervently believe that. Okay, so those are some horrible memories. What about uh, the first, are there, is there any specific play in the 92 NFC Championship game against the Cowboys? The first one, where the Niners really should have won. They were at home, it was muddy, um, and they lost 30 to 20. Are there any specific memories from that game? I don't think there's any really spe any specific. We couldn't play. we couldn't cover Alvin Harper. Correct. And he destroyed us. Oh. We shut Michael Irvin down. Like he Michael Irvin got a couple like key first down things, but it was the big pops to Alvin Harper that just destroyed us. And he I remember he ended up, I think, parlaying that and that entire playoff run into a massive contract from the Bucket Ears. Not that year, then, but it was like two years later. Yeah. Yeah, but like that was part of it. And he got that massive contract and then he just disappeared off the face of the earth. Jesus. I, I yeah. And who are the who are the quarterbacks? Eric Davis was one of them, I think. Right, Eric Davis. Um I'm gonna look that up. I'm gonna look that up. Who's the other yeah. who's the guy that was burning all those coverages? You remember? And our safeties were playing terrible. He was just getting behind everybody. And this was Ronnie Law was done at this point. It was Merton Yeah, Ronnie Law was already he was already on the uh I want to say net by this point, the Jets, not the Raiders, but the Jets. Okay, you know you. Oh my God, I'm looking at this right now. Do you know you want to know who that secondary was? We both blocked yeah. it out of our memories for very good reason. Uh, Eric Davis was one of the quarterbacks, and he he held his own. I mean, Michael Irvin it was, was like his first or second year, though. He was young. He was young, but again, he, he was 24. But again, he was holding his own, man. Like Michael Irvin. I was thought he covered team. Irvin. What's up? He covered Irvin, right? Yeah, and Irvin was yeah. not killing him. It was Alvin Harper. Yeah. You, do you know who the other cornerback was? Who? Oh my God! We both just really like. I think in our brains intentionally. Oh, no. oh, I don't to hear this. Don Griffin. Oh God, he was so bad. He was awful. And then, yeah. do, you want, do you want to know who the safeties were? The the strong safety I didn't mind that much. It was Dave Whitmore, although he never really yeah. did much for the Niners. Like he kind of vanished. And then the the free safety, who I never really liked that much, but he stuck around with this team for a while. Dana Hall, the first round pick. It was his rookie year. Remember that guy? Yeah, that makes me want to barf. It makes me absolutely, absolutely. This is gross. I, I, I we, 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 we can't go to a, like a. I mean, that Dallas team was so stacked, like at every position. We go to a game with that as a secondary. I think everything else was fine that year, man. Like the offense, you know, twenty points yeah, yeah. was not enough, but it was okay. I mean, Steve Young just had a bad game. Like, uh, but yeah, I mean, when you look at the defense, man, Kevin Fagan was still playing. <laughs> yeah, you must have. You're old. <laughs> Uh, Michael Carter was still playing as a nose tackle. Oh, he, Here's yeah, he was, you know, he was an Olympic shot putter. I do. Yeah. That's random. I think what he got yeah. a silver medal, right? Yeah. I believe so. I think that sounds right. And then, yeah. uh, uh, Pierce Holt, you remember him with that? He had like oh one, yeah. He had like a fake eye or a bad eye or he, he there some, <laughs> remember there was something weird going on with him, right? With his eye, like didn't one look like, I don't, like I don't remember, man. <laughs> So okay, so what, whatever that's like, that, I can't think of a. I guess that okay, fine. One of Alvin Harper's long runs, horrible memory for as a Niner fan. Um, Steve Young getting knocked out thanks to who was that running back? The, the, that was Bill Walsh's biggest stain in his entire career was thinking that well, who was the running back from Nebraska that they that they picked up that missed yeah. the block? Steve Young got his career finished. Do you remember oh, that? You're talking about in '98, Lawrence Phillips. Lawrence Phillips, thank you. Yes, yeah, he was. was we, he shouldn't have even been in the NFL, because um, when uh, he was at Nebraska, he was uh, arrested for assaulting his then pregnant girlfriend. Yes. Yeah. That, he again, shouldn't have even been in the NFL. I was embarrassed that we signed him. That was one of the first times I was like, "Oh, gross! Stop!" And that was a Bill Walsh signing, dude. That was. I know. Like, I know. He thought he could redeem him, and I get yeah. it. Like my last good project, but it's like, no, Bill. This guy's just not worth it. He, he was terrible. And yeah, well, it, but I remember the image too because Young's head hit. Uh, I want to say it was like Harris Barton's knee, and then he got knocked out. Remember, he was out. Yeah, yeah, that was. But like he he came down right on the offensive lineman's knee. Yes, he did. Yes, he yeah, did. that was not. No, that's a bad memory. That's a horrible memory. Yeah. Um. Oh, there's more. I can think of of quite a few. Oh more. yeah. So in yeah. in two thousand in two thousand well. In 2001, I believe it was a, a it was a wild card or a divisional playoff game against the Green Bay Packers in Green Bay. Jeff Garcia's pass to Terrell Owens, if it was just an inch further, that would have been a win. Who knows what the Niners do that year? But remember, it was a little short, got tipped. Right, right. 
and that was it. And so the Niners lost that game. Well, and- like in, uh, I want to say it was 90. When was the year the Falcons, 99, the Falcons went to the Super Bowl? When when Garrison Hurst broke his ankle? And Bryant Young got hurt in like the first like quarter oh, of that game against right. him in the playoffs. And we lost 30 to 18 on like one big play. You're right. Um, yeah. That was a bad – I remember just being like, I don't think we're going to win the Super Bowl this year, but, like, we should beat this team. And then they well, that beat was the, us. That was the then, game right after the Young to Owens pass. Right, correct, correct. Um, it was we, very we could, I think we could have beaten – we should have beaten the Falcons that day, but losing Hurst and Bryant Young in, like, the first quarter. Kill. Like, that was our, our – Bryant Young is one of the most underrated defensive linemen in NFL history. Ever, ever. I'm he so glad he's finally getting his due this year. Yeah, yeah. The Hall of Famer. Um and then God, man. And then I don't think there's any really one play then from like 2002 up to 2010. I think there was just one big nasty blur of a memory. Uh, Cause the Niners were just awful for like an eight, nine year span. Right. Is that You're like, we won a playoff game against the giants where we like After totally that. pass interfered. Remember that? that? Like, yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, that was, was it was like the greatest comeback worst- in playoff history. Yeah. Still is, I think. Right. Or yeah, one of was, them. Yeah. But that was just like, Oh my God. Like this is, I'm, I'm like sad for people who have to watch this, but that's not and a bad Niners memory. That. That. We're talking bad Niners memory. Yeah, now. but like as far as playoff wins go, that was kind of like distasteful. <laughs> like, it was pretty obvious, like we cheated to win. Like they were calling out the rule like on the broadcast, and it was like, "Oops, we screwed it up." Like we shouldn't well, look, have won. Man. Look, regardless we of that, won. regardless of that one play, the Niners still came back down like thirty or true, something like true, that. I mean, true. and it was against the Giants, which is always always a pleasure. Absolutely. I mean, they're, then, they're on that list of teams. What's your what's your like top five teams that it pleases you the most when the Niners beat them? Oh, you mean the, the so the biggest Niners rivals, like the uh, like the most gratifying. Maybe just not necessarily rivals in that order, but just like you know, what teams do you uh you know derive the most like just individual pleasure, like whatever it's shot and fruit or like you know just sadistic pleasure, or you're just happy because you like to see that team lose. Like just what 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 what's your top five like teams you right. just can't stand? And you got to give me yours next. I'm gonna say yeah, yeah. when the when the Seahawks are good, Seattle, uh, Green Bay, Dallas, the New York Giants are bad. But when they're good, I'll put them in there. I don't know if I have a fifth man. Oh, the Rams, the Rams. Yeah, do the Niners play this Sunday or Monday? Yeah. Actually, the Monday night game, right? Is it yes, Monday? Monday night game, which gives us an extra day for what? I don't know. Like no reason. Um. Oh, uh, oh, let's see here. Well, obviously, number one's Dallas. Okay. Um, growing up in the 80s, going to Niners games, like they were bad. Uh, after the catch, they were, were terrible. And every time they played at Candlestick, it was like everyone was just so much angrier. Because they beat us uh, three or four times in the 70s in the playoffs. Like us beating them in 81 was a big deal. And so we finally did that. And then like in the 80s, it was – I remember like – you know, they had the shirt and it was like F Dallas. And I asked my dad when I was a little kid, like, what does that mean? He's like, well, we don't use language like that. But, you know, when it comes down to it, son, F Dallas. It's like, OK, OK, I got it. So they would be obviously number one. Like right now, I think I I, I just hate Pete Carroll's face in Seattle. I just I hope we just beat them every time for like the next 20 years. Yeah. Um, uh, Denver is on that list. And it's only because of and- like, this is a very specific reason. Um, there was a game in the eighties at the old mile high stadium and Ray Wershing was going for the game winning field goal. It was like a chip shot, 20 yarder and a fan threw a snowball in the field and it landed near him, like right as he was kicking. And they said no fan interference. He shanked the kick. And it was because the refs were just getting pelted with snowballs and everything and trying to get off the field. So they just said, Nope, game over Niners. And I, at that point, those just stupid burnt orange jerseys. Like I, I just, passionately don't like denver <laughs> and john elway too like just that they're they're on that list um the giants are probably on there but just they're just not good enough anymore you know it's kind of like beating like the kid who used like the 80 year old man who used to be like a boxer in the 30s yeah like that's that's what the giants are and that um, game by the way 1985 i looked it up it, it's known as the snowball game it was a chip shot I don't. I don't remember this game. I was. Uh, oh, I remember watching it from home because it was there. I think my dad was at the game actually, and 17. we were watching it. And I had, like. I think I cried myself to sleep that night. I was so upset. 
17 to 16 was the final. Um, yeah. Yeah, and the spectators were throwing snowballs, and so Ray Wershing missed the chip shot. I'm trying to find the video of that. Oh, dude, I found it. You want to see it? Yeah, put it up. Should we go back into memory lane and we'll see? If, we'll see if my memories match up with the actual like gameplay. All right, this was Ray Wershing uh, missing an easy. It was a 16 yard. Yeah. Uh, here it is. Here's here's a Ray Wershing uh, snowball chip. Well, I don't believe that was a fake. And I don't know what you do about a snowball hitting your holder just as he tries to place the ball down. That's also very dangerous, unsportsmanlike and dangerous. But it does not reflect well on the fans here at Mile High Stadium. Kavanaugh, but it does not reflect well on the fans here at Mile High Stadium. Kavanaugh, looking at bouncing snowballs all around him, tried to get the ball desperately to Russ Brown. Oh my God! What do you think? I, I don't. I didn't see a snowball actually affect the hold, though. Did I you mean, see there were chunks flying at it. I did. I did, but I, I think, think, it, I think that was really you start good. seeing white things flying at you, and you're trying to concentrate on the one thing you have to do. What do you think's gonna happen? That's obvious fan interference. The NFL should have stopped it right there and said re-kick. And said if anyone's caught throwing a, a snowball on the field, you'll be escorted from the stadium. Who who's Matt? I forgot Matt Cavanaugh. He, he was a uh, he was a, he was a Bill Walsh backup for like eight yeah. years. Yeah. Well, not that eight years. It could have been that long because Matt Kemp was a backup. Oh, I guess that's true. It was like maybe three or four. He was around. Oh, yeah. Matt, Matt Cavanaugh. But yeah, it was obviously like you can see like he just he, he looks up at the like stuff flying at him. Like it's clear there's snowballs like flying in from everywhere, and the refs are doing nothing to control this situation. Ah, <laughs> oh, the eighties. Ah, oh, the eighties. Yeah, and yeah. then when you and just to just to finish up on this topic, worst Niners memories. Obviously, uh, I would say fourth down from the five yard line. Uh, that it was just a culmination of four straight horrible play calls. Yeah. Uh, God damn. What, but you know what's like, like? You know what the worst part about that play is? The next year in the NFC Championship, he was like, "Hey, it didn't work last year. Let's go back to the well again." Which leads right to again. the next, the next Sherman, play Sherman shut down uh, Crabs, Crabtree. The, the very yeah. next year, uh, the Niners have a chance to beat the Seahawks in Seattle. That was an improbable situation, by the way. I could not believe the Niners were even in that game uh, and in that situation. But then, yes, Colin Kaepernick throws uh, just what a, just a short throw. It was a short. It was short by this much, right? Is that safe to say? Got tipped. Throw? Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't. There might have been like a <laughs> like a three centimeter window to fit that ball in. It was maybe not that. I don't know. I don't know. It's awful. It's awful. Yeah, so yeah, that was um, pretty bad too. Um, and, then, and then since then, I, I I guess yeah. Then more. And then you fast forward, and then Jimmy G with the Manuel uh, Sanders. God. Damn it! That still pisses me off. Um, I knew the moment he, he missed that. I was like, "Oh, that might have over. been that, that might have been that might have been it." It's over at that yeah. point. Yeah, and then yeah, um, and then this last year, I, I mean, when you look at the NFC Championship against the Rams, are there and you thought they were going to win that game? You thought the Niners had that game? Were, were there any one plays that you feel like cost them? We dropped interception. Oh, yeah, that's right. I mean, that that's the game. He catches that game's over. God damn it. So what are we yeah. looking at with the Niners right now, man? So the, the, NF, the NFL allows seven teams in the playoffs right now, right? Is that seven the new teams format? in each conference, and there's 17 games instead of 16. So you have what, way more ground to make up. And, uh, you know, it's 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 – yes, every game's important. But, I mean, look around the league right now. Who are the only undefeated teams? Eagles. The Eagles and the Dolphins. That's it. And then, yeah, that's it. That's it. Giants <laughs> lost last night. Who are the who are the seven they're going to come out of the NFC for the playoffs? I mean, I think the Eagles. Right well, the now, Eagles obviously. The Eagles look like the team to beat in the NFC uh, right they, now. I, yeah. well, they they beat Minnesota so bad last week. I thought I think that like it took Minnesota a half into the Detroit game before they realized that they're good on offense, and they had to come back and beat Detroit. Um, Philly's tough. Hurts looks amazing. He does. Um, You're right. I think he's the first quarterback in NFL history uh, to throw for 350 yards and run for 150 in the first three games. 
He's done that in every game so far. No, no, no. Uh, sorry. Excuse me. He's thrown for a total of 950 and rushed for a total of 150 in this team's okay, first three games. He's the first quarterback to ever do that. Um, That's impressive. Yeah, they look good. Um, Green Bay is going to get in. They will. Uh, I, mean, I don't, you know. They will. You really think they're not, not going to be the best team in the North? I think Minnesota is going to win that division. You th Minnesota? Yeah, I still think so. Okay. All right. Well, let's say Minnesota gets in the playoffs with Green Bay. That's three. Okay. Tampa Bay is going to get in. Uh, um, I don't probably. Probably. I, I don't think Jameis Wiseman's back is going to hold up for the next three months. It's already broken in like five places. I, I just don't – or like, I don't know. It's bad. So I, I think like there's no other team from the South making the playoffs. I don't Plus the Saints just lost Michael Thomas and Jarvis Landry. That's a big blow for their offense. Their defense is super good, but uh, – that's tough. That's tough to overcome on offense. I mean, do they go to Andy Dalton? Is that something they consider? If Jameis is just chucking the ball and he can't throw it accurately because his back's so messed up, like what? I mean, what what gives you the best chance to win? I don't know. I don't get paid the money for that. Um, I think it's a bad situation either way. So then we're looking at the West. We got Rams, Rams and and I I think the Niners will rebound and be a playoff team. I just think you know it's like last year we didn't start very well last year. No, and we turned right. it around uh, once everyone was healthy. And I I just – I think we're wasting these defensive games because the defense was so dominant against Denver. I admit Denver's offense does not look good. They have three touchdowns in three games. But the Niners really, really took the wood to them. Like nine three and outs. That's insane. That is insane. That's dominance. And like three of them, they had negative yards. So I mean I, I I think we could be that other team, but that's that's only six right now, right? That's five. Oh, with the no, Niners, if I said Niners and Rams with the Niners six, yeah, and then and then the seventh team could be I don't know uh, Carolina. Could no, be the no, Baker Mayfield's bad. <laughs> um, I think I think Odell Beckham Jr.'s dad was right. <laughs> He's the problem, you know. And then, but the Cowboys will probably get in, given the East is so bad. Oh, I. What about the Giants? No, no. <laughs> they could have won last night. I don't care that who they're that Daniel Jones man that he's awful. Yeah, Danny Dimes is pretty bad. He's awful, man. Yeah, is it, the Atlanta Falcons? Weirdly, a lot of people are saying aren't a bad team. What do you think about them? Did they just they just beat Seattle by four? Yes. Seattle's defense is probably the worst defense in the league. Sorry, no, can't buy into it. <laughs> they have Cal Pitts, and, like, they don't want to use him in any way whatsoever. He has, like, seven catches this season. He's the probably Niners, – well, sorry, go ahead. I was saying the Niners, by the way, have the number two defense in the NFL in terms of yards per game. Um, that's impressive. That's really impressive. They, they only trail the, the – uh, and then for points per game, they're third – Behind the Buccaneers and Broncos, but yeah, yards per game, they're second behind the Bills. That's yeah. I hear what you're saying, man. Yeah. But then their offense. Oh it's it's a work in progress. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I, I want to have hope. I want to have some faith. I want I, you know, I, I want things to be good for the Niners. I want to I want them to have all the best things, but we'll, we're just gonna see how it goes. It's a long season. They're 21st in total yards per game. They're 27th in passing yards per game. Bill Walsh is rolling over in his grave, man. And then, uh, and then running yards and rushing is like their strength, which I hate. Um, they're actually uh, sixth in in rushing yards per game, and then uh -huh. points per game, they are 25th. That makes sense. God damn. So it happens when you score 10 points. And Kyle Shanahan's supposed to be an offensive guy. And Correct. this is what's going on. Let me ask you this. The Jets are a decent team. Yes or no? What do you think? This year? I'm going to hedge more towards no, but they have okay. the potential to be on any given Sunday. I'm so interested to see. They, they looked like, um, like the first game they looked really bad. And then for like a quarter against Cleveland, they looked like they could win the Super Bowl. Right. Well, then this last weekend, they once again looked really bad. And that's the Joe Flacco effect. Right. So he's, Zach Wilson. I think he's in his 50s now, right? 
uh, so, so, so Zach Wilson, who, by the way, what, well, who was he rumored to sleep with this off season? Was it his? So it was mom? his, his, his college roommate's mom. Okay. But see, this story gets, if you really want to get into this story, we shouldn't even get into this, but it's crazy. I do want to get into this. So supposedly he slept with his college roommate's mom. His college roommate is, uh, uh, actually a wide receiver in the NFL. Um, Ooh. look this up. Uh, okay. But uh, and so now his college roommate is dating Zach Wilson's ex in revenge yeah. because he slept with his mom. Um, well, I mean, but it takes two to take. I mean, do you think you don't? So you you have you're you're cynical about the true intentions of the relationship, like you don't think they're actually in love. Oh, I bet they totally are. They, they probably fell in love with like a mutual hatred for Zach Wilson. <laughs> Because he probably like, you know, deed over that girl, like treated her like, you know, hey, I'm Zach Wilson. I'm big time now. I'm banging MILFs like and treated her like garbage. And she was like, ew, and, like instead of doing some like 80s, you know, like get revenge movie, they they just decided to hook up and like now they're happy for it, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Zach Wilson sounds like an absolute POS, but like just saying we went to college with a guy like that. Yeah, I know you're talking about. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, you do. So, the, so the other, so the, uh, so the other, the other player is Dax Milne. Who's he? Yeah. I don't know. Who he's playing Milne, right now. Milne, oh, M I L N E. Dax Milne. Milne, right? Milne. I think it's just Milne. Milne. Milne, and he's a receiver for the Washington Commanders. By the yeah. way, the Washington Commanders. I got to play this real quick. Makes no damn sense. That's a horrible thing, dude. Commanders. Yeah, I mean, Comanchos. Like, uh, I heard, I heard Stephen A. Smith call them the Commodores, like accidentally. Uh, that's a horrible name. Like, why would you? Why Some people I, just call them the C-word. Is that what they say? I've heard people say that. Yes. <laughs> the Washington okay. C-words. The Washington C-words. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is going? On? Well, Daniel they, Snyder's I, like he's like Sarver of the NFL. Yes. But the NFL is such a buddy buddy system that if they show like any like chink in the armor, then it's like, Oh, we're, we're, you know, blah, blah, blah. We, we lose power. Cause there's just these old rich white guys who are just right. insane. And Snyder is like the worst of them. Cause he's kind of younger. So they don't really like him. And I, I wish we knew more about the whole, he was ripping then off thing. Do you hear about that? No. Oh, so po supposedly for like 10 years, Snyder has been lying about the gate receipts because the NFL, like all the ticket receipts go into a specific pool and then are distributed equally among the owners. So if okay. he undersales the ticket receipts, then he doesn't have to put as much money in the kitty. Correct. And so it's like the owners were like, oh, you can be a super racist. We don't care. You can like not care about women in your workplace. Eh, big deal. But it's like, oh, you kept money from us. Now, then now. Like, yeah, yeah, it's go time. And you so, crossed like, the line there, buddy. Yeah, that's yeah, where you yeah. Line. That's <laughs> so that's why, like, they're starting to really get upset with Snyder. They're like, the more we find out about this him stealing money from us thing, not like everything else terrible he's involved in. Like this guy's, uh, man, he's a piece of work. He's a piece of shit. No, yeah, you're right. he yeah, completely is. He's an awful human being, man. There's no yeah. doubt about that. Um, it's crazy. It's crazy. You're right. He's there's all sorts of stories about him. Like he, uh, he had a buddy who worked for the uh, the Forest Service. And like he had this building that was built uh, right next to like a natural preserve. So he got like paid inside money to get these trees taken out of the preserve. So his sight line from his building would be better. It wasn't a building. It was his house. Was it his I house? Was, yeah, I think it was his house. Because oh, his backyard God. was like on a lake. But there were like these trees there. And he wanted the tree. Yeah. yeah but yeah, yeah. It's the story is it's same, same shit. Um, well, it's, it's kind of crazy. Like now all the movies that like we watched as kids, like the guy wants to destroy the community center. That's like Daniel Snyder, it is. you know, like the, the owner of the baseball team wants to get the attendance so low they can move the team out of town to a better city. That's actively happening with the Oakland athletics right now. We are living major league. Are the A's your team baseball wise? Yes, they are. Yeah. What the dude? How crazy is that scenario? I mean, I I know we weren't planning on talking baseball, but the A's really are the movie major league. They really yes. are. It's, and then the I, owners admitted it pretty much straight up. He's basically said crazy. like, "Yeah, I want to get the attendance so low so we can move the team." And it's like, "Wait, did you just like literally like read the script to major league?" It's it's literally. I mean, if you go to an A's game and no one does, but if you actually no. do go, 
it's fucking empty, man. It is yeah. a cavern, dude. I it is, it's it's really. I've never seen anything like it. Like I, I don't know if you're a player, how you feel about that to have this. Uh, and and Al Davis ruined that stadium. Yes, it was a fun place, man. People don't realize like when we were kids, going to an A's game was cool. Oh yeah. Um, well, that's how I became an A's fan. Was my dad had a friend in the A's ticket office, so we would go like maybe two or three games a season. And ended up going up to a couple World Series. And, I mean, those World Series, even though that team was, like, half juice, and that was still, like, a great time. It was a great environment. We were pumped. Yeah. We were rocking. Bash Brothers, yeah. baby. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and and the outfield had, like, that that green, those green uh, plants that were above this, the bleachers. You had the Oakland Hills you could see beyond there. And then Al right, Davis, right. man, just the – it's ruined the whole place, dude. I cannot believe that that <clears> – <throat> for a team that only plays there eight times a year, I cannot believe the city of Oakland did that, man. Just ruined that whole stadium just for that – so the Raiders could come back for 20 years and then take off again. Uh, it's crazy what's going yeah. on there. Do you think they're going to go to Vegas, or do you think they're ever going to get that new stadium like a Jack London Square or wherever the hell they're trying to – I heard the last one was down like on the waterfront. Yeah. Jack yeah. London Square. Okay. Like if they did that, that would be amazing for the city. It would be beautiful. It would be great. But um, I'm pretty sure the ownership's actively against that because they just they don't want to be in Oakland anymore. No, they're not against that. They're they're cool, dude. Like if, they, but they don't want to like. No, I honestly just don't think they want to be in Oakland. I don't know what what this thing is with people want to go to uh, Vegas so bad. Like, do do they right. not realize you have to live there? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it's do you know, do you know, like it's. I mean, look, Vegas. I know it's growing. It's you know, so for business opportunities, you know, I, I get the water. There's no water. There is no water. It's in the desert. You kind of need water in the desert to support growth. I don't. Yeah. Okay, I don't whatever. Get I don't get whatever. that, man. <laughs> I mean, uh, have you ever seen? Have you seen Al Davis's kid, Mark? We with that crazy haircut. Oh my that, god! Like, is he just so self-aware? He thinks that's like, like a look. I don't know what the logic is there, man. What like what does that compare to? It looks like a mop. Like he has a mop. He looks like his head is a mop. Only it's like weird blondish. Well, blondish like the, the, there was the someone compared him to the picture from the like goofy old man who dresses up as a kid in like the Mexican telenovela, <laughs> telenovela or whatever it is. <laughs> no, I follow. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Absolutely. <laughs> Are you looking it up right now? I'm well, I'm looking up Mark Davis to see if there's a there's a, a logic behind that awful haircut dude oh here uh th there is a story it came out last year from the new york post which is not exactly a bastion of journalistic integrity but um <laughs> they put down the truth behind mark davis's terrible haircut is quite shocking um so according to this uh mark davis said i just blow dry it and it ends up like this i don't really have to comb it um it's not well, my you should barber's start trying. I don't know. <laughs> it's not my barber's <laughs> fault with the hair. I force her to do it. And John Gruden supposedly does the same thing with his hair. I mean, uh, John Gruden, rest in peace. Um, <laughs> Whatever. <Rest laughs> well, I'm just saying his career is done. Like, you're never going to see him. Well, yeah, I, don't, I hope we don't ever hear from him again. Yeah. So, um, but Mark Davis, that's, yeah, that's, he just, it's just easy, I guess, to have your How hair. How is that thing. shocking? I don't know. I don't know. That's a good point. Um, so you think the Niners? So you still have hope for the Niners? Ultimately, you still. Yeah, think I mean, that. I, I think we. we uh, if you look just how good our defense is, like we're gonna be in a lot of games. And I think you know, as I said, just give give Jimmy a week or two to really like get in sync with the offense. And I mean, you know, let's not forget Denver might have like a top five, top ten defense themselves. Like, they're pretty good, and we were playing in Denver on primetime. I know it's not the old mile high. It's not as loud, but it's still, you know, pretty loud. And the air affects people. Just saying, like, let's give Jimmy a week or two before we completely, like, you know, put a fork in him. Now, the Orlovsky play, like, I just – It's just I, he does that shit a lot, man. It's not like that was the first time he's – we were we were bumped up, and I mean, like, it wasn't like he was egregiously out. He barely like stepped on the line. But yeah, I mean, I don't think it's I, I don't think Orlovsky's free because he like ran a country mile, like looping around the back of the end zone. Like, he ran back behind like the camera oh, yeah. and everything, and then tried to throw it. Like that dude, it's a little different. I'm not I'm not willing to go that far on Jimmy. 
God damn it. I just hate that Jimmy. This is the entire reason why I did not like the idea of Jimmy G coming back as the backup. Who would be our starter right now then? What's up? Who would be our starter right now? Well, 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 hold on. Let let, let me finish my point here because I I don't know if Kyle Shanahan is so cavalier with his his play calling with Trey Lance if he doesn't, in the back of his mind, know that Jimmy G is there as a security blanket. Like, I, I, just, I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't know if Shanahan risks Trey Lance's body that that flippantly, like just that egregiously, if if he doesn't have a good backup quarterback. You see what I'm saying? Like, maybe he's a little more conservative at that point. No, I, I don't, because you look at other teams with running quarterbacks. Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, they have just as many design plays. Maybe not as many, but I'm just saying, like, it's it's like I get where you're going, but I'm just saying, like, no, I don't think he would. I don't think he would. Even if like Brock Purdy, which is what's happening right now, was like, you know, he's our backup right now, right? Brock Purdy? Uh, I guess. <laughs> I don't That's know. what I'm saying. Like if Jimmy G gets hurt, like what happens then? <laughs> I Well, here's the thing. If Jimmy G gets hurt, at least a nine or – oh, my God. I, I, I can't even finish that sentence. I was about to say at least they get a good first-round draft pick. But no, that pick goes to whoever they gave it to – in the Trey Lance trade. So never mind. Right. Oh my God, dude. What a freaking mess they put themselves in. They should just sign Ka- Kaepernick. I mean, it can't, it can't hurt. It'd be such <laughs> I mean, a great PR move. At this point, it can't hurt to bring it back. I mean, right. what, what do you have to lose? Right. You know? Well, God. York probably, York probably said something like super mean to him. And Trey, and Trey, God, and, and who knows what, what version of Trey Lance we get next year. Right. You know, he last he's he's barely played for three years. That's yeah. it's oh my god, man. Oh, the Niners just depress me. At least we got the Golden State Warriors. Uh, Absolutely. They're going Absolutely. to Japan. They're going to Japan. The media day was incredibly fun. That's uh you you were talking about on my I, I posted on my Twitter account all these video clips uh from Media Day. And there was one where you were pointing out that Draymond Green. So they were they were posing for photos, and the photographer had the players like doing action stuff where they're like passing the ball um, as part of the photo. And so there was a Warriors employee catching the, the balls that were being passed. And I'm standing next to that guy taking pictures and Draymond's pass is so wild. It, it like it hits the hat <laughs> and I got the camera angle right where the ball is coming toward me. Um, but the funniest part of Draymond was uh, Quindary Weatherspoon, who's who has one of the, the, the two two way deals. And I hope oh, I, I saw this video too. Yeah. You saw that where like Draymond yeah, yeah. just shows up. He goes, "What up, young fella? Get out of here!" And like <laughs> <laughs> Draymond's like, "I'm not waiting for you." Like he just walked. <laughs> and then you can he's just on his phone. phone. He doesn't even bother looking up. Barely. He's like, "Oh yeah, get exactly. out of here!" Just like, looks right back down to his phone. Yeah, that's <laughs> hilarious. There, I don't know what someone said to him, but his response was like, "What, what do you want me to do? What am I supposed to do?" What can't like he was just like, "What like what the hell can I do?" It's Draymond, you know, like yeah, it's just exactly. Funny. It's, it's yeah, funny seeing yeah. that inner working man because that's how Draymond rolls. Like that's his team, he, you know. Like he calls the shots. Uh, it was that was funny. Um, I want to hear some things I want to reveal though. Patrick Baldwin Jr. is a huge human being, man. That's a big boy, really nice guy. I'm gonna interview him soon for for the other show I do, Locked On Warriors. Um, he's a big boy. So, and my point to that is, if he actually ends up being just a decent player, dude, the Warriors future is set. Like, like look at the Warriors. Yeah. Years from now, potentially Jordan Poole is your point guard, Moses Moody as your uh, as your shooting guard, uh, Patrick Baldwin Jr. potentially as your small forward, Jonathan Kaminga as your Draymond Green power forward, uh, James Wiseman as your center, Ryan Rollins comes off the bench, Clay might still have some good years left five years from now, Steph might still be playing five years from now, Draymond's probably done. Uh, my point is, dude, that, that, that's that's exciting, man. Five yeah. years from now, the Warriors dynasty could just look different. But still be a dynasty. I, Dub Nation, you're stoked, dude. What are your thoughts on that, man? What are your thoughts on the? Well, Warriors? I mean, I, I was talking to one of my coworkers about just how if you look at the the Warriors, you know, like 15 players now that Iggy signed, from top to bottom, like I don't understand where the weakness is. Like None. Steph, None. Steph has not lost a step. He's he might actually be a better defender than he's ever been in his career at this point because he's so much smarter about it. Um, I think Clay's now another year removed from the, you know, he's, he's more time removed from the last injury. Like he's going to be a better shooter. Some of that defense is going to come back. 
Wiggins is just going to once again, because now I feel like oh. Wiggins is just so comfortable that he's just like, I don't have to worry about anything anymore. And he's not in his own headspace. He can just play. Um, yes, Draymond, he's going to need to be on some, some time restriction this year, some limits, you know, um, got to hold that body up for the playoffs, but he's a great teacher when he's on the court. He's basically, I mean, he's the, he's the quarterback. He's the defensive mm-hmm. he's the middle linebacker. He's in charge of everything. Um, and that, that's okay. That's just like what the starting five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Looney, you know, Looney's a big man just coming into his own prime. He just knows he. I, it's like I feel like last year he just figured out like he 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 unlocked his own cheat code. He's like, oh, I can do this because before it kind of was like he almost seemed like I don't I don't want to say timid because that's not the word. Uh, but last year he figured out like exactly what he what levels he could reach, and so. He's just going to be better now. He has the money. He feels he feels rewarded. I don't. He seems like the kind of guy who's going to play better now that he's paid. Um, and I mean, then we got Pool. I mean, <laughs> he, he's just going to be you know a better offensive player. I'm not sure about his defense, but you know that's that's a work in progress. Then we got Moody, Kamingo, Wiseman, PBJ, Rollins, Divincenzo. Like that's just a and then an Iggy. I mean, Iggy only has to play like maybe five ten minutes. In that, important yeah. games, yeah, in important games, like we don't need him for like a, a you know one night stay in Orlando. He can Here, I'm going to show you real quick those two plays. Uh, I, I got the video. This was Draymond Green, um, basically just just walking it up to the photo session that Quindary Weatherspoon was already in the middle of, and was like, "What up, young fella? Get the hell out of here!" Not literally, but uh, here here's that clip. Uh, check it out. <laughs> Yo, fella! Uh, I love Wiggins just watching it all. <laughs> and you can hear, and you can hear in the background, like when Quindary going, "What, what do, you, what am I, what do you want me to do?" Like he's just so yeah. flustered. And yeah. I love Draymond, you're right. He just looked up for a second. He was like, "Young fella." <laughs> yeah, right back, yeah. back down. And Wiggins is just standing there laughing the whole time, like, "Yeah." <laughs> Wiggins really is like a super quiet dude. Like he, re- it is exact. It is like everyone says. He just doesn't say much, but you can tell he loves it here, man. Yeah. Um, God damn Absolutely. it! Is cra- it is crazy how that like, Kevin Durant trade worked out. And then this was a uh, Draymond barely missing me uh, uh, when he was doing that passing exercise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that almost hit me. That, that it, like nicked my hat, but it didn't fall off. Nice, it was a fun nice. time, man. It was a fun time. Um, that sounds great. That would be a blast, I bet. It was, it was, dude. It really was. I needed that, so that that was fun. Uh, let's go pop culture, man. Let's let's wrap up the show on that note. What are you watching these days, man? What's going on, on TV? Uh, I mean, well, I, I've been watching She Hulk. Which love that show. It's amazing. Love. It's hilarious. Um, bravo, bravo, dude! Yeah. It's it's it, I love how they I, I haven't finished watching it. I'm like three three episodes in, but I love how they turned it into a lawyer show. Like it, there are like there's actually a case she's working right, on, right? Right? Because it, and I think this is why it, it's successful is because it's um uh it's taking like okay so everything that everything we've seen so far in the MCU has consequence. It has it has like a, a purpose behind it. It's either leading to another story or it's a, a, a an arc in this character story, but this is the first one where it's like, you know what? Let's just look at like the everyday of it. Let's yeah. just look at the behind the scenes and just have fun. And so it's that, that lighthearted nature along with, you know, it, it is still superhero stuff. It's, it's very well done. It's very funny. Um, I don't know if you've gotten to the, uh, the episode with Madison yet. No. no okay. So I'll, I'll, well, you're I'll in for a treat it. there. Uh, that this might be the best new MCU character of the last 10 years. She's she amazing. Or, the, or this Madison person? This Madison person, yeah. 
Oh, okay. All right. Well, we'll save that. Okay. I, yeah. I will, we'll talk on the, yeah, we'll, we'll get back to that. Um, yeah. Like loving that. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm finally making my way through Cobra, Cobra Kai. I'm, I haven't done season four or five. I, I'm only in season two, so don't, don't spoil it. Oh, done. Okay. I won't spoil it for you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, have you started watching Andor? Yes, I have. I watched, I watched episode one. I was bored shitless. No, I love it. I love it. What, where is it in the storyline, first of all, time wise? It says it in the very first episode BBY five. What does that mean? I don't know what BBY means. What the hell Before the Battle of Yavin, five years. What is the Battle of Yavin? When the Death Star was blown up at the end of Star Wars A New Hope. They call that the Battle of Yavin? Yeah, because it was on Yavin 4. Okay, I did. I, I, of Yavin. I could be wrong my with bad. that. I'm sure, I'm sure I'll be corrected. But yeah, that's the Battle of Yavin. So this so was five years before that, and you consider Rogue One took place literally right before, right before A New Hope starts. So, so this it's probably is like four years before, four and a half years, five years before, you know, Rogue somewhere one. in that time range before Rogue One. So this is okay. So okay, this is younger Andor before he's fully involved with the Resistance. Andor is uh, Diego Luna's character, correct. Who is he, man? Why is he so important? Like, why does he have his own show? Well, because he was the major spy that helped steal the Death Star plans in Rogue One. He's, He's the one who got those plans? Remember at the end of the end of Rogue One? Have you seen Rogue One? I have, but it's been a while. So maybe you have well, to. So like, it's, it's him you. and the, uh, what's her name? I can't remember the actress's name from Rogue One. But, like, they're on the, the, the Beast, Beast planet. planet. Uh -huh. And they transmit the plans to Princess Leia's ship. And right. then the Beast planet gets destroyed. So they're the ones who heroically sacrificed their lives to deliver the Death Star plans to Leia. So he's a major, major like person, uh, historical figure within the 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 resistance. So where where do the Bothans come into this? The Bothans. I can remember like uh in in Return of the Je <laughs> I love the Star Wars nerd and we've we've trans trans yeah, sure, sure. here. Uh, but in Return of the Jedi, remember like the. They were doing the speech uh, before it was like the battle preps uh, meeting where all the generals are there. And that one uh, character, she goes, many Bothans lost their lives getting us these plans. Um, you don't remember that? OK, never mind. No, uh, I do. I do. I'm just trying to I'm sure there's a reason. I'm sure there's like a, a retcon or something for that. The, I don't know. Yeah, forget it. Forget. It. OK, so OK, so I get it. So and Andor dies in Rogue One, right? Yeah, at the very end, everyone dies pretty much. Felicity, I forgot her name, Felicia. Felicity, uh, yeah, that sounds <laughs> right. Huffman? No, no, that's the Felicity Huffman's from other stuff. Felicity Jones. There we go. There you go. There you go. Um, okay, so this is how Andor became. This leads up to how Andor became like a spy. Basically, yes. And you're liking it? I only saw one episode so far. You well, like so, it? Okay, um, I, I'm not going to lie. Like, I really do love the genre of like the 70s, like tense spy thriller, like Three Days of the Condor or Marathon Man. And uh, this is kind of like, you know, uh, I, I think Captain America's Civil War kind of had that same feel. Not Civil War, excuse me. Um, uh, Winter, Winter Soldier. Yeah, Winter, yeah. Yeah, had very much that same kind of old spy craft, like, you know, espionage, like can't trust anybody feel. And that's the vibe I'm getting massively from, well, I've watched the first three episodes too. And there is some more fleshing out, but a lot of it is just kind of just like weird nebulous, like who's good, who's not, whose motives are pure, like kind of stuff. And it's, it's interesting. And they're, they're, they're fleshing out some of the backstory so far in the first three episodes. I I'm willing to give it, I'm going to give it, you know, I'm going to watch all of it, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I'll watch it too. I'll watch it too. But, but yeah, it's, it's so far I've enjoyed it. Okay. All right. You, you've yeah. actually sold a little more for me because I, I couldn't even figure out like when it was taking place. I couldn't figure out right, like what right. the point of all I actually, was. I'm not going to lie. I, had to, I knew the term BBY, but when I first saw it, I had to look it up. Yeah. I, I still, okay. Because right. I guess uh, it's like uh, there's like a after the battle of Andor or something like that is like the other one. Okay. So it's like, I don't know. All it's, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, I've been watching that uh, Rings of Power too on Amazon. Free. I have not Amazon, yet. Amazon, if you want to sponsor us, we'll take it. And that's the third. And that's yet another uh, uh, fictional universe that's huge. So we got like obviously the Marvel universe. We got the Star right. Wars universe. This is Lord of the Rings. Correct. Uh, what? Tell, so yeah, what is this about, man? I haven't watched a single episode yet. 
Where in the timeline? Okay, okay, let's see if I can figure this out. Um, I believe Lord of the... I'm, I'm going to get this so wrong, and uh, hopefully we have listeners who can tell me why I'm wrong. But um, uh, I believe the like the Lord of the Rings movies, like Return of the King, Fellowship, all that stuff, I think that's the fourth age. Okay. And this takes place in the second age. So like in the Lord of the Rings movies... Um, Kate Blanchett plays that really, really old, like, elf queen. Yes. Yes. Well, this is her when she's only, like, a couple of hundred years old. So and, she's like, like, is she the only character from the movies that's that's in the show? No. No, maybe. Possibly. I don't know. Okay. Maybe. Meh. We'll see. It could be. Okay. Um, <laughs> but so this is, like, two ages before, and Morgoth was, like, the bad guy. And, uh, Sauron was one of his like lieutenants. Oh, so Sauron's in it. Okay, that's two characters. All right. He's well, he's not really in it. They he's talk normal. about him. Okay. But he's not in it per okay. se. Um maybe yet. Like you might see him. Yes, I don't yes, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Um it's been it's it's been a a, a a slow burn series, lots of dialogue, lots of great, like cool visuals. The acting's awesome. Uh I'm really bad with pe- actors and actors, actors' names, uh, but the the actress who actor whatever who plays um, uh, I'm going to mess this up. Galadriel, the character okay. that Kate Blanchett played, she's phenomenal. Um, yeah, it's it's really well written, really well acted. It, it looks beautiful. I don't like. I I think I'm figuring out what's going on, but like, it's very. It's it's just we'll see. Are you entertained like, after the whole story is told, kind of thing? You know. But I'm enjoying it now. Huh? Enter- is it entertaining? Yes. Okay, good. That's all that matters. I mean, it's right. not like I'm watching She-Hulk and I'm laughing out loud, you know? Like I'm they've watching. been they, they've been watching uh because I mean like the new season of Bob's Burgers dropped. We got one episode so far. We've had like three or four episodes of the new season of Archer. Um by the way, I'm a huge H. John Benjamin fan. Big fan. Love him. He's the guy yeah. who voices Archer and Bob. Gotcha. Oh, and also, oh, okay. All right. uh, oh, yeah. He was also the uh, um, the can in uh, Wet Hot American Summer. Okay. You ever seen that movie? No, I have not. I oh I guess man, I should. you should. I, guess I should. Okay. I, the original. The original movie is a classic. It's it's an all star cast. Before they like most of them were famous. So like you go back and watch it now, you're like, oh wow, like Bradley Cooper, Amy Poehler, Paul Rudd. Uh, no shit. Yeah, uh, like keep, American keep, Summer. Okay, I gotta look that oh, up. Oh yeah, All right. yeah. But so Christopher Maloney uh, plays. Uh, you don't know why, but he's kind of crazy, and he plays that like camp cook who has okay. a, a can that talks to him. Uh, that H. John Benjamin. It's like a can of corn or something that talks to him in the kitchen. Uh huh. Yeah. And so that's and voiced by H. John Benjamin. Yeah. Oh my god! I, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll probably watch this movie soon. I, I don't know how I haven't seen this yet. That's crazy. Okay. Wet Hot American Summer. It's on the list. Have you yeah. been watching? Uh, I guess let's end on this note. I've been watching Game of Thrones, the the prequel, and I saw the, the first house. one, but That's I haven't it? seen it since. Yeah. Why? Uh, I, I don't have HBO Max. <laughs> there you go. Okay. All right. Were you, were you? Did the first episode impress you? Like, I mean, is are you yeah. in? I mean, it seemed good. Yeah. I, I really. I mean, I'd watch it if I had the opportunity. Yeah, I really miss Game of Thrones, man. I mean, I know they screwed up the last you know episode or the last couple episodes but but still i it's hopefully there's rumors yeah. of john snow coming back in a, in a spin-off which would totally make sense because you could fix the whole damn thing if you do that um yeah i i just dude i absolutely love have, have you have you read the books at all no 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 what's it called like song of fire and ice or yeah some weird name is that what it's yeah. called yeah the first book is great. called the game of thrones and in i hear the song of fire and ice series so the first book of that is called Game of Thrones. Yes. Are you, do you like it? Do you like the books? Oh, I've read all of them. Yeah, yeah, they're good. They're really good. You're, I feel like your pow- your superpower is is reading comprehension. Like you read really fast, right? Uh, for the most part. I mean, I try and do fifty two and fifty two every year, which 52. is fifty two books in fifty two weeks. Jesus, dude! All right, I'm uh, that's fucking that's impressive, man. Yeah. Jeez, I do. I bravo, man. Huh? So do you, can you can you can you keep that clip going if the books are like like textbook type content or does it have to be like like interesting? 
Like if it's a dull it, book, it depends. Cool. Um, yeah. Like I mean, I, I don't know. At any given time, I might have like three or four books I'm reading. All right. Like I'll start something and like well, so like I live next to this uh, used bookstore, and it's probably my favorite store in town. Okay. And like, uh, there's certain books like I have, you know, mentally on my like little list, like in a series or whatever that I want to read. And so, like, if they don't have them there, I'll start reading something else. But then, if I get them, like, I'll be like, oh, that's the next thing I want to read. And so I'll just bust yeah. through that, you know. I'll just do that. So right now, I'm reading. Uh, I guess I'm only reading two books right now. Only. Yeah. Um, I think it's called the the first book of. Uh, it's called what? What a uh, the name of the wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Okay, it's, uh, it's the first book, and I want to say the King Killer Chronicles. Um, great! What probably one of the best uh, sci-fi fantasy books kind of things of like the last fifteen years. Uh, really good. The, the sequel is pretty good to uh, What the Wise Man Fears, and yeah. then uh, the third one. He's he's got a little. Uh, George R. R. Martin disease going on. The third one was supposed to come out two years ago. It hasn't come out yet. So we're waiting for that. But they're really good books. Really good books. That's a, you know, it's like I don't know if we're ever gonna get the next uh Song of Fire and Ice book. Yeah, I don't I mean I feel like you would have finished it by now if he was going to and well made I mean, money, yeah. you know. I, you have to understand though, like by the time the like fifth and fifth book rolls around in the book series, because like if you watch the TV show, it's it's pretty condensed. And yeah, they introduce a lot of new characters and regions and everything, but like it's all pretty like straightforward, like who's who and who's doing what. Right. Um, in the books, multiply that by like about a thousand for every location on the map, kind of thing. Wow! Just like he, he just world builds and world builds that there's just so many characters. Like a lot of storylines got condensed. Like all the storylines in the show for like some of the characters weren't their storylines in the books but they had to get them in. So it's just easier to do 14 characters instead of 50 for a TV show, especially when you're right. trying to sell fantasy to America right. because that just doesn't work. So they have to cut characters and they have to like do other things with other characters. So the books by like, I think it was the fourth and fifth books were actually supposed to be one book, but they just, it just got so big that he split it into like two, a thousand page books. So Jesus. like those two books are actually like happening like simultaneously almost. So yeah. And but I mean, is there a point to finishing it? I mean, you know, he's made so much money from the show. Like, I, I mean, I would, I would like to think he would. Yeah. Um, it's like a, a good example, like too. And I'm not saying he's going to die anytime soon, but like, um, uh, Robert Jordan wrote the, the Wheel of Time series, which started off really good. About the, for me personally, like books five through like eight or nine are like solid. Uh, I'd say like five through eight. And then like nine or 10 or 11, like he, he was getting older and the books just start kind of meandering. We're not really oh, getting really? anything done. And finally he passed away and they brought in Brandon Sanderson to finish the series. And so Jordan's widow gave him all his notes and all his books and all that stuff. And, and Sanderson went and finished the series. And I felt like he did a really good job taking somebody else's work and like, you know, doing two and a half books and putting a bow on it. Right. And I mean, like, I hope that doesn't happen with, you know, George R. R. Martin. I hope we get his, you know, like vision for what the, how the story ends. But I just don't know if we ever are going to. Is the, but did Game of Thrones, the TV show, end the way George Martin said the books were going to end? He hasn't really said. He never revealed that? Well, he said he told the writers some of the things that were going to happen in his ending. Yes. But no, he hasn't revealed his ending because he hasn't written the books yet. Why would he do that? For the TV show, because of the well, he said he told him yeah some of the parts of it, but not like okay. everything, because like some I mean like what, that's another point is like he can't really tell them like what his ending is because some of the plot lines are so wildly divergent from what's happening in the TV show. Hmm. Okay. Did you like the ending of the TV show? Uh no no not really. <laughs> but I mean, I didn't it was, mind. I, the only part about it I didn't like was. After everything for the brother and sister who are dating, uh, sorry, I don't remember the name, the Lannisters, they died way too easily. I mean, for every, for all the shit they went through to just die from a fucking building falling on them, like, yeah. that was weak. I thought that was weak. Uh, I thought Jon Snow deserved better than be shunned to the, the northern 
areas, whatever that place is called, the north of the wall. Yeah, I thought Daenerys got just shafted with the way they ended her story. Yes, and and Bram. I mean, like I, I, I'm okay with him being the king, but I I thought yeah. Jon Snow should have had that. I that was weird. Oh, hey, hold on. Spoiler alert. Yes, we're gonna be talking about the finale for anyone who's never watched it. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Well, spoil it. Yeah, I mean, dude, <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta gotta say those things, even though it's ten years old. You're right. That's fair. That actually happened on a, an episode of She-Hulk, which you haven't seen yet. They reference like um, a twist turn in an episode of Sopranos, and people online were like, "I haven't watched that yet. What are you doing?" It's like that show came out 15 years ago. Like, I'm sorry. Like, you don't get to call spoiler like after that long of a time. <laughs> Like, I'm just sorry. It's like, you're, like you're, you're just getting upset for nothing. That makes it makes no sense. Yeah. Spoiler: Tony Soprano dies. Sorry, to, sorry, folks. <laughs> uh, no, we don't know that either, do we? <laughs> oh no, we do. We do. The creator revealed it. David Chase revealed uh, that it, it going to black was him dying because there was a, there was an illusion. There was uh, an illusion earlier in that final season. Um, well, I forgot the name of the guy that made the train sets. That was Junior's like bodyguard. Oh, Bobby. What? What? Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. So Bobby, uh, him, and uh, Tony are like they, they go away on a trip. It was just it was just them two and their wives, and they got in a fight. I think it was Tony's birthday, and and Bobby makes this reference. They were talking about what happens when you die, and Bobby's no. He goes, I think just it just turns black. Everything just turns black. It's just oh, gotcha. Like that. Gotcha. And um, and that's what and it probably is what happens, dude. Especially in the mafia world, if someone just like goes just comes up and just blasts you in the head. It's, that's probably what happens. Just black, like it's over. Yeah. Um, I just, I would just be, I would just, I wish we did see it, just to see the kids and their reaction, and the and the and Carmelo just freaking out, and and you know Tony's just dead on that table. But yeah, he told yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poor Tony, that's but funny. he did have a huge, he did have a huge ego. He was one of those those uh, heroes who really wasn't that good of a guy, but we still really anti hero. Him. He's an anti-hero. He was a horrible person if you think about it. Yeah, like, I don't really think he was like that much of a hero. <laughs> like, who did he actually protect? But he's a protagonist. He has family. Well, he protected his family, but yes. Uh, but he is the protagonist. It's like, it's like uh, what's his name? When uh, what, what was the guy, Ralphie? Yeah. Like he didn't protect the stripper when Ralphie was beating her to death. He just beats Ralphie later. True. Like he just I, he just reacts on his true. how he's emotionally like taken out of it. He's no hero. That's like his saying kids. Walter White's a hero. His Give kids, me a break. They're the protagonists of the sh of the show, though. Sure, but that doesn't make them heroic. They are, they're they're anti heroes. Yes, they are. They could be villains and still be the protagonist. That's true. That's true. So yeah, they're villains. Um, anything <laughs> else we talk? What's up? <laughs> anything else we got to cover? We we all good for um, the week? Uh, I don't know. We made progress. So every so we, we so for anyone still listening at this point, uh, <laughs> we we do this live every Tuesday at one p.m. p.m. Pacific time. Today we had two live viewers. Last week we only had one, so we're making progress. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> we're there, brother. We're getting there. We're getting there week by week. Anything we got? Week to, week. We forgot before we go. Um, I don't think so, man. All right, go get yourself some elotes. I might. I might just cut the 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 kernels off. I, I think in a lot of places you can get it that style too. Ooh, there we go. Okay, elotes. Like they shaved right. off the the cob. You can follow John Zimmerman on Twitter at John Zim 406 You can follow me at Dog Surf Rocho. And that's it. We all good? We out? All right, buddy. What are you going to do now? What's what's your plan for the rest of the day? Bong loads? Um, I don't know. We got trivia tonight. Oh, you're so lucky. <laughs> that sounds fun. Yeah, trivia at 8. Um, I got to do uh, – I got to cook some stuff on the barbecue. For who? Uh, huh? For who? Oh, I bought uh, a bag of drumsticks last week, and I didn't want to freeze them because we don't have much room in our freezer. So I'm just going to cook them off and then eat them throughout this week. There you go. Yeah. Barbecue sauce, in my opinion, is the key to barbecuing chicken, right? Am I right or am I wrong? Well, with the drumsticks, what I like to do is uh, I season them and I throw them in the oven for about an hour so they get a good, nice cook. So okay. I'm not trying to like – they just keep that juicy core – and I'm really just trying to get like the outside that nice crisp burn, but like you know, yeah. so it's still nice and juicy inside, but you got that yeah. good like crunchy skin. Right. So that's that's my technique. Okay, that's a good technique. Yeah. I like it, man. I just the, the, but the barbecue sauce gives the outside that that, that little char, the little crisp, right? Or, or no? Yeah. Oh yeah. Sounds good. Definitely, Enjoy the sugars it. in there definitely do that. 
have fun at trivia night, man. I'm jealous. I will. I I will. All right, folks. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you. Listening to you guys just ramble about nothing. They once made a TV show about that. It was actually kind of famous. Yeah. Um, All right. We need need a kooky guy and a girl. (laughs) 